Hey guys, Linda here at Pacific Star Winery. I am so excited to introduce you to this place and the winemaker here. This is about 12 miles north of Fort Bragg in Northern California, and the coastline is beautiful and the wine is fantastic. You've gotta come check this place out. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like us and subscribe and make sure so you know every time we upload a new video, hit that notification bell too. We made our way to Pacific Star Winery on scenic Highway 20 through the coastal mountains. The deep forests growing in those mountains are beautiful. And the drive up Highway 1 dropped us to the grounds of the winery, sitting right on the edge of the bluffs, overlooking the Pacific. I don't know what's more amazing here, the views or the wine. Take a look at this. Now, you're gonna want to bring your bottle out to the bluffs to enjoy sipping your wine to the very best view you could possibly imagine. There will always be a comfortable chair or a picnic table for you to relax in, and the senses are filled with the sights, sounds, and fresh smell of the ocean. Whale watching always adds to the incredible experience. Sally, the winemaker and proprietor of Pacific Star, shared with me a few nuggets about her passion for wine. I make a lot of wines that are not common. Mm. Um, I'm in Napa, I made Cabernet, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, you know, all the usual suspects, Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. and none of those are on my list now. Ah. I try to find things that are rare and unusual and need to be reintroduced to the public. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask this question. If you were on a desert island, what one varietal would you want to have with you on that island? Charbonneau. Oh. Yeah, Charbonneau's been my passion for 30 mm. years. Mm -hmm. Once I discovered it growing, uh, I went to every Charbonneau grower that I could find and begged for grapes. <laughs> I think I've made Charbonneau from almost every vineyard there is in existence. My grower is Eddie Graziano, and Eddie and I have been friends for well over 30 years. Mm. He just loves his vineyard, and I love Eddie. Eddie's just dear to me. Um, he planted a new vineyard of Charbonneau for me about, it must be 15 years now, lost track of time, but his old vines were over 50, 60 years old, an old wow. dry farm vineyard. And so when I discovered Charbono, I, I did research and, and learned its history and it's medium everything. And it's the perfect wine. It ages beautifully for 10 years. It's mm -hmm. just novel to everyone now who exists now. But I believe my, thought about the the origin of Charbonneau in California is that when the first wave of Italians got on the boat, mm -hmm. they grabbed grapevines to take with them because it's their water. <laughs> they are going to make wine. Yes. So what are they going to take with them? They can't take everything. Mm -hmm. So they grabbed Charbonneau because it represents red wine. And mm -hmm. when they got to this country, it, they actually didn't know what it was. Most of the grapes that came with the early immigrants really weren't identified because we didn't have the sciences. And regionally, they have different names all over Italy. Oh. So Charbono wasn't known as a grape. It still mm -hmm. isn't. But it it's so special that I embraced it. And you are actually talking to the queen of Charbono. <laughs> <laughs> I got crowned by the LA Times in 2001 and they sent me a crown and it's gold and has big gems around it. I don't wear it often because I'm intimidating enough. <laughs> <laughs> the main tasting bar is just a small portion of what treasures await inside. Gourmet cheeses and meats, 
and fun clothes, hats, books, and oddities make exploring in there an adventure. Sally pulled out some of her favorite wines and she talked about her inspirations with the sound of the waves crashing against the rocks, providing the perfect ambiance. I've gone to very eclectic, rare and unusual grape varieties that I reintroduce to the public. And mm, it, I love it that. makes it interesting for me. It makes it interesting for my customers. <laughs> yes. um, it's much more fun too. Yeah. Because you never know what you're going to get. And we make a lot of signature blends, mm. which I find used to be considered leftovers. And now mm. people have respect for blends. Again, the next generation realizes that it's the art of winemaking. I love that. Yeah, you can put Zinfandel in the hands of three winemakers and it will come out differently each mm. time. And that's because everybody has their own concept and style. And mm -hmm. That's what makes wine interesting to me. Um, so Dad's is a, is a traditional blend that all the old timers used to make in Mendocino County. Mm. It's Charbonneau, Carignan, and Petit Syrah. Oh. And uh, it's not my recipe. They created it, and those were the most common grape varieties 50 years ago. Okay. So now they're the least common. Okay. Um, mostly because we transitioned to single blocks of single varieties, mm. and Cabernet became king. Uh, and all these old varieties kind of went by the wayside, okay. got pulled out and, and dis disregarded as blending grapes. Okay. So the label is a photograph of my dad, um, who was a World War II veteran, um, mm. decorated veteran. Uh, he was a paratrooper and marksman in the Philippines wow. in World War II and was actually with the company that liberated the Bataan Death March survivors at the Los Banos camp in Luzon. And my dad was a very handsome man, so he got on the label. And he was on the label for um, 15 years before he passed away. So Aww. he got to be the guy on the label. The guy on the day. label yeah. for all those years. <laughs> That's wonderful. All right, I'm going to enjoy. Oh, Hope you like it. it's fantastic. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, my goodness. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> I I just have it to also say it ages beautifully. The, the uh, varietals that's are gorgeous. That is one of the best reds I've ever had in my life. Oh, thank you. It's like fantastic. Dad would like to hear that. Dad would like to hear that. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about how just being here so affects your mood in such a positive way. Yeah. It really does. The ocean is really a powerful mm -hmm. part of nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to combine the two is, it happened by chance, but it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. Having people come here and enjoy this product, this magical product. Yes. And the ocean at the same time. Yes. It's pretty wonderful. Yeah. I barrel aged um, my wines for an extended period of time. I use neutral oak barrels, and, oh. and so it doesn't impart more oak flavor. It just allows the wine to develop in a natural way, okay. and, and the magic that happens in a barrel yes. is still continuing to happen, which is really the acids in wine with the as natural acids of the wood, mm -hmm. um, it, and it truly is magical. So the wines on the table here, we've got this wonderful Petit Syrah. We've got the Carignan, the Charbono, the Barbera, Dad's Daily Red, and the It's My Fault. All of these wines are absolutely stunning, but I know that you've told me you do have 14 of them I here. Think I do at the moment, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm yes. Um, but they're absolutely stunning. All of them are, and I love the uniqueness. You know, you've mentioned to us the uniqueness of the grape and what and you're making a story here. For every wine, yes. There's a reason for being. Yes. Uh, which is the most fun when we're talking to our customers because mm -hmm. they want to know the story, mm -hmm. and uh, we. One of the reasons I. Make so many wines is I get really tired of listening to my own voice. <laughs> so I, then I open different wines every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't really talked about the fault. Oh, this is um, we have both a red and a white. It's my fault blend. Mm -hmm. um, I had been here for 16 years when a geologist arrived. She and her husband came here to picnic, and she was looking around and she said, "I saw evidence of a fault." 
and she brought back a team of geologists and mm -hmm. she discovered a very large fault on this property <laughs> and she named it after the winery mm. so officially in the record books so so we have a fault I ran in and made it's my fault mm -hmm. and we've had so much fun with it no I've never felt an earthquake <laughs> no not once no, in not all in, this but time three years is not very long geologically so understood I, I don't expect that I will in my lifetime that's true that is true I don't live in fear of it <laughs> <laughs> and the fault you have here is because the North American plate that basically we're sitting on right now is grinding against the Pacific plate right the Pacific mm -hmm. plate is it's a uh, subduction fault so the Pacific uh -huh. plate is going underneath the North American plate I see and the whole thing is moving to the Northwest at about 10 millimeters a year ah yeah so it's active uh, we don't know how active there's a seismograph mm. in the cellar <laughs> recording 24 hours a day but it's not something that native Californians think about very mm -hmm. much Sally and I made our way back to the outdoor tasting bar and we joined her husband Marcus there Full of charisma and fun, he is not only Sally's right hand, but entertains the guests with his own unique way of aerating the wine and seasoning the glass. Thanks so much for joining us today here at Pacific Star Winery. Sitting here with some friends enjoying a beautiful glass of wine Oceanside, just watching the fog roll in. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit that notification bell so you know anytime a new video is uploaded. See you next time on California Swirls.